Hello everyone, hope you are learning well. So in this video, we'll discuss the last problem of lead code bi-weekly contest 107. Uh, it's a medium level problem. So today's contest had three medium level problems and just an easy problem. I would say the only thing that made this contest tough was the lead code website <laughs> because it was sort of almost down for half an hour or so during the contest. So it was tough to submit the code. But yeah, the overall, I would say the problem is relatively easy. Let's see what it is asking us to do. So the problem name is count zero request servers. Okay. So you are given an integer n denoting the total number of servers and a 2D zero indexed integer array logs where logs of i equals to server i comma time. Okay. That denotes that the server with ID server ID received a request at time t. Okay. An array, you know, an array with these entries that this server received a request at this time. Simple. Okay. You are also given an integer x. And a, and a zero indexed integer array queries. Okay. Return a zero indexed integer array, a, array of length queries dot length where ARR of i represents the number of servers that did not receive any request during the time interval queries of i minus x and queries of i. Okay. Note that the time intervals are ex inclusive. Okay. Simple. It is saying me that these are the logs. Okay. These log represent that this particular server received a request at time 3 this particular server that means server 2 received a request at time 6 this server that is again server 1 received a request at time 5 okay this is something that i, that I already have these are the total number of servers and this is a value x these are some queries now for these two queries i need to return the answer okay what is the answer for example the first query is having a value 10 so 10 minus 5 to 10 for this interval, I have to tell how many server servers did not receive any request like y minus 5 because x is minus 5. Okay. Queries of i minus x till queries of i. For this one, it will be 11 minus 5 to 11. So within this time interval, I'll have to tell how many requests, how many servers are there but did not receive any request. Okay. Let's find out the answer. So for queries of 0, the time interval is 5 to 10. Okay. Now the servers with ID one and two, okay, get the request in the duration of five to 10, right? Server one, server two, okay. Basically these two are receiving request in five to 10. So this is the request and this is the request. These two requests basically hit server one and server two, but total we have three servers. So there was only one server which did not receive any request for these queries. Okay. For this particular interval, so answer is equals to one. Okay. What's the second query? The second query has a time interval of 6 to 11, right? 11 minus 5 to this. Now again, how many servers re receive the request in this interval? How many servers are there? So for this particular time interval, that is 6 to 11. This is one server. Okay. This is the only server that received a request in this interval, right? But total we have three servers. So three minus one, that is two servers did not receive a request. Hence my answer is two. So this is what the problem is asking us to do. Let's see the second example as well. Again, I have three servers. These are the logs. These are the queries. So for the first query, the time interval is three minus two to three. The second query it is four minus two to four. So from one to three, how many servers are there? So a request at time unit one, time unit two, and again time unit one. These are the three requests in my time range, one, two, three. But how many distinct servers are there? Server two, server one, server three. That means three servers are there, which received a request, right? Which received a request in this time frame. So total zero servers were empty, right? All the servers received the request. Similarly, the second interval is two to four. Okay. So just see, this is, this is one server, server two. Sorry, this is two to four. Sorry, this is two to four. This is the server that received a request, right? This was out of interval. This was within an interval. And yes, these are the two servers that are within an interval, server one and server two. So the only server that did not receive a request was server three. So total one server did not receive the request, right? This is what the problem is asking us to do, right? I would say it's a uh, very trivial problem if you have solved these type of problems, right? Why? Just see here, queries are given, right? Now, when you have a collection of queries, that means you have to return an array. That means some you can rearrange the elements in these queries. Okay, because they are not giving you, you know, one query at a time, rather they have given you an array of queries. So just 
Tell me one thing. Forget about these queries, okay? If I have a sorted, if this is my number line, right? This is my number line, right? And this is time unit one, two, three, four, five, something like this, okay? If I want to find how many servers received a request within a time interval, right? Forget about this problem. If I have to find out how many servers received a request within this time interval, right? I can simply do it, right? I can basically take a map. Why I can take a map? Because maybe at this time interval, server one, server one received a request. At this time interval also, server one received a request. So these two are actually the same server. I need to see distinct servers, right? So what I'll do, I'll take a map. The key will be the server and the value will be the number of requests received by that server, okay? So in short, when I traverse this, this range, and whatever is the number of entries in my array because each entry correspond to a server. So number of entries in my array will tell me that these many servers received request, at least one request in this time interval, right? Simple, I can do that, that right? And the total number of servers is N minus whatever is the size of map. That will become my answer for this time interval, right? I hope this thing is clear, very easy. Now. If I know the answer for this interval, suppose from 1 to 5, I know the answer that within timestamp 1 to 5, these many servers were there. Now, if I want to calculate the number of servers which received a request from time frame 3 to 7, 3 to 7, what I can do from 3 to 7, I have already calculated from 1 to 5. I want to calculate from 3 to 7. This part is common. Okay. All I need to do is I need to add entries in my map for this part and delete for this part, right? This is what, what, I, what I need to do. So basic sliding window, right? Basic sliding window technique. Basically, you take two pointers. Let's take a left. Let's take a right. This guy right will take care that till seven, I'm right now standing at five. Till five, I have, you know, added the values in my map. Now I'll keep on adding the values in my map till time interval seven. Right is basically the upper bound, you know, the, the upper bound of the interval, which I am going to process. What is left? Initially left was left was one. Okay, because this is the starting of my interval previous interval. But now my left should move to three, right? Because entries one and two have become invalid for me. So this left and right are two pointers to take care of the left and the upper bound of the current interval. So basic sliding window, you add these things keep by keep by incrementing right and you delete this by incrementing left right so in short if i have sorted timestamps okay in if i have sorted timestamps i can simply use a sliding window technique to calculate answer for different time intervals right one thing is done so in short if i just sort it based on time interval that means this is the server id and this is the timestamp this is a 2d array just sort it based on the what do you call it timestamp okay this part is done now the second thing is here the windows for which i'm calculating the answer i'm assuming them to be sorted what do i mean by this that means initially i calculated the answer for interval 1 to 5 then i calculated the answer for 3 to 7 now here the intervals are sorted what do i mean by this just see this has a starting point of 1 this has a starting point of 3 the next interval will obviously have a starting point which is greater than or equals to 3 okay get it means there will be no condition that here i have an interval i which starts from 3 and i have an interval i plus 1 which starts from 2 this is not this will not happen so in short i'll just sort my queries as well i'll sort my queries in increasing order okay because that will basically facilitate in using this particular technique sliding window technique now you must be thinking that first query is 3 second query is 4 if i if i sort it i'll lose the order right but in that case, you have to modify, you have to create a new array maybe. And that array will look like this. Initially, you have a 1D array of queries, create a 2D array of queries where the first element is basically the query value and the second element is index. So that when you sort it, when you are calculating the answer for a particular interval, when you calculate it for this interval, you should know that this interval belong to the, which particular query, maybe to the fifth query. So that fifth index or the fourth index will tell me that okay add this answer to fourth index of your answer array getting it this is how, how i will do it right let's do one thing let's look into the code these are the only logic that we have used in the code and the code is very easy i would say right just see what i have done here arrays dot sort logs the first thing that sort the request based on the timestamp okay a comma b that means these are the two entries you receive if 
two timestamps are same, okay. If, sorry, if two timestamps are not same, so first keep the uh, lesser timestamp, right? Sorting in increasing order of timestamp. Again, I have already told you the reason. However, if both the timestamps are same, sort them according to the server ID. Basic stuff, right? Then these are the number of queries. Now, if these are the number of queries, this is the size of my answer. Logs dot length means how many entries do you actually have? So, because I need to use the sliding window technique, right? Now, this is the new queries area that I've created. So the first dimension will have the queries, right? The second dimension will have the index for those queries. Just see, I'm traversing the queries, new queries of i comma zero, queries of i, new queries of i comma one is i. So that when I sort it for the, I have a relationship between these two, right? So arrays dot sort new queries, a comma, a comma b. If, uh, you know, if the, the intervals, if both the intervals are not same, sort them in increasing order. Else if the both are same, sort them based on index, index, right? That won't make any difference, right? This is the map that I have, the map that I was talking about. Why I'm taking map? Because in a particular time interval, there is a possibility that a single server is receiving multiple requests. So a map will take care that I do not count the same server multiple times. Simple. This is right. This is left. I is equals to zero. I less than M. Okay. For all the queries, I am going to process. How I'll process? The current end, the upper bound of my current interval is new queries I comma zero. The current index, remember I sorted it, right? So the current index of the actual queries array is i comma one. Now what's the start? Start is current end minus x, simple, right? Now let's keep on adding the values till this particular upper bound, current end, okay? What I'm doing? While right is less than log dot length. That means keep on traversing till you have entries in your logs array, right? Just see what was logs length, logs dot length, okay? and logs dot write of one okay means keep on adding the entries till the timestamp is also less than the current interval i mean the upper bound of the interval you keep on adding it what's your current server logs of right comma zero remember this is server this is timestamp okay map dot put current server map dot get or default this is just a syntax it says that if you have this entry just increment it by one or else it else add it with a entry one, right? Just a shortcut to do that, right? Increment right plus plus because we'll keep on moving, right? We will keep on adding the timestamps, okay? Now what we'll do, while left is less than log. So if this is my interval, however, if I have entries from here as well, so I've just written a generic code, okay? This will take care of edge case as well. What edge case? That suppose someone asks me that, okay, tell me the number of entries in uh, from five to 10. However, my time, time starts the entry the request start from timestamp one so this logic will add all the requests from one to ten but i need to skip the request from one to five right for the first query i'm talking about for the rest of the queries it will act as sliding window so what i'm doing while left is less than log dot length and left of and logs of left of one current date start so whatever entries whatever timestamps are less than current start i will just remove them from the map this is the current server remove them from the map so you decrement the count if the count becomes zero, you just remove it. Because if I do not remove it, then that server will, uh, you know, that will be still present in my map. And hence that will be counted towards a valid server. But that is not the case, right? So that is why you will remove it. And then you'll do left plus plus because you keep on moving, right? You, you start from here, you have to include this interval. So if your left is here, you keep on moving till this point. These entries should be removed from the map, okay? left plus plus now finally answer of current index what was current index this new queries of i comma one remember because i sorted it right n minus map dot size map dot size tells me the distinct number of servers that received a request in that particular time range and n is the total number of servers simple that's what we'll do and you'll it will return the answer array right so this is how we'll solve this problem the trick here is as soon as you see that okay i have to do something like this and i have given the whole queries array i can somehow tweak the array in a way in some order so that you know traversal becomes easy and the calculation becomes easy right here you can see sliding window technique by just reordering both the arrays gives us the required result right so yeah that short that's all for the solution i hope you learned something new from this video do support it by giving up a thumbs up do subscribe to the channel as well in case you have any queries related to the solution mention that in the comment section i'll revert on each one of them thank you take care bye bye